Hey, you, please, you gotta help me. I I'm trapped, and I think this is a carnivorous plant. It's gonna eat me. What? Nah, that sign's wrong. It isn't truly carnivorous, because it's not capable of digesting animals on its own, so you'll- I'll be okay? Oh, thank God. If you're done interrupting me, I was going to tell you that this plant relies on insects to eat the trapped prey and then poop it out onto the plant for fertilizer. So it's not a carnivorous plant, it's a proto-carnivorous plant. The definition of true carnivorous plants are plants that derive some or most of their nutrients from trapping and consuming animals or protozoans, typically insects or other arthropods. Carnivorous plants often evolve in nutrition-poor environments, lacking things that plants need to survive, like phosphorus or nitrogen, so they supplement their diet by eating animals. First up is the pitcher plant. The pitcher plant has modified leaves that create a slippery pocket filled with digestive juices. The plant excretes sugary nectar at the rim of its trap to attract insects, and when the insects get too close to the edge, they fall in and get digested by the plant. There are many different species of the pitcher plant, and they have unique abilities and relationships with their environments. For example, some species produce conine, a sedative for insects, which makes them get clumsy and fall, and some species have a top that they can close to prevent escape. In Borneo, three species of this plant have a mutualistic relationship with the tree shrew, where the plants grow, quote, toilet pitchers. These toilet pitchers secrete nectar in a spot where the shrew has to position its back meat over the pitcher's pocket to be able to lick it. And the shrew often poops in the pitcher. This gives the shrew food and the plant nitrogen, helping both of them. Once again, the mutual exchange of body fluids is quite pleasurable for both parties. The largest known pitcher plant is Nepenthes ra. Nepenthes raha. Nepenthe- Nepenthes Raja. Raha? It's capable of holding 3.5 liters, or just under a gallon of liquid. It works in a slightly different way than most pitchers. It secretes the sugary liquid from its lid, and then when the prey goes to drink, it falls on top of them, trapping them inside. It's been observed eating lizards, birds, frogs, rats, and even tree shrews. If you're wondering, this is also one of the ones that eats the tree shrew poop. Imagine a world where your toilet is actively waiting for you to slip up so it can eat you. This is the tree shrew's everyday life. The California the California pitcher plant, or cobra lily, has a different way of eating. It's called the cobra lily because people think it looks like a snake, I guess? It waits for an insect to enter its hole, and then folds over the exit and turns the insect into a nutrient slush. The cobra lily has slippery walls that make escape difficult. Also, it has multiple parts in its skin that are more translucent than other parts. These look like fake exits from the inside, which lure the insects deeper in. Evolution is weird, like the plant is deceiving an insect with false hope so it seals its own own fate. That'd be psychological torture if insects have enough of a brain to have a psyche. Next up on the list is the Venus flytrap. In addition to an extensive musical career, the Venus flytrap has stalks with two lobe-shaped leaves at the end connected at the center by a midrib. The trap produces nectar to attract insects, and when the insect brushes past the trigger hairs on the lobes, the trap snaps shut and the little hair-like extensions at the end lace together at the other side, making it as tight a seal as possible. This trap is powered by a complex system of pressurized water in the plant. The plant then digests the insects with digestive enzymes, leaving behind only an exoskeleton. Kind of humiliating if you ask me, I feel like getting eaten by a carnivorous plant is the Darwinian equivalent to dying on the toilet. Next up is Drosera, or the sundew. The Drosera has many stalks, all tipped with mucilage, a sticky substance that the plant creates alongside sucrose to attract insects. As anyone would, the insect tries to drink the delicious mucusy slime and it gets stuck to the stalk. The insect begins to to freak out, because the mucus that it was just devouring seems to have turned the tables. And that movement causes the stalks to slowly wrap around the insect and digest it, again leaving only an exoskeleton. Now that's pretty terrifying. Just goes to show you that no matter what species you are, you should never trust a stranger offering you sugary treats. Another plant that's suspect and sticky digesting insects quickly is the Penungula morinensis. This plant has pad-like leaves connecting to a stalk that extends upwards. The leaves are coated in a thin layer of sticky juice, and they look like they are covered in dew or nectar or whatever. The point is, insects love to eat sticky stuff, so they land on it, but it's too sticky, and they get stuck, and they freak, and the movement causes the stalk to release more sticky juice to surround the insect, where the insect is broken down by digestive enzymes, and the goo and insect juice are reabsorbed by the leaves, leaving only an exoskeleton. Now, what have we learned so far? If you get trapped by a carnivorous plant, do not panic and flail around, because the plant will just try harder to turn 
turn you into a skeleton. Last up is the bladder wart. When I first heard that name, I wasn't imagining a plant, I was imagining some bladder warty creature like this. The bladder wart is an aquatic plant with a series of trap filled roots that expand into the water. The bladder wart has the most sophisticated trap in the entire plant kingdom. When prey activates the bladder wart's trap, a flap opens up while the bladder pumps out water and creates a vacuum, pulling the prey inside, and then the flap closes behind the prey. While dying inside of a bladder sounds terrifying to me, there's definitely at least one person that paid to be drawn doing exactly that on DeviantArt. The plant can consume much larger prey, such as tadpoles or mosquito larvae. They catch one section of them inside, and pull them in and slowly digest them bit by bit. That settles it, carnivorous plants are officially nature's saw movie traps. So what did we learn today? If you like this video, please subscribe, hit the bell, leave me a comment, and like, or else. If you want to be a part of picking the upcoming AZFK video, please visit my community page and vote in a poll. Did you know that on March 15th of last year, I started the AZFK YouTube channel? That's right, soon, or possibly already passed, depending on when I upload this video, it'll be one year old. One year in, and 12,000 subscribers, I think that's a hell of a good start, at very least. I want to thank all of you for making this possible. As always, like, seven at the bell, and I will see you all in hell. Hey, <laughs>